Hi and welcome to everyone on my YouTube channel. Now this video is a small snippet from my course on the Udemy platform for those who want to be certified as an AWS Solution Architect Associate. So I've devised a small preparation course which will help you at the end moments when you want to give your exam. Now, in addition to this preparation course, you will also get free access to practice tests, which I've again devised on the Udemy platform. You will not only get practice tests on the Solution Architect Associate, you will also get practice tests on the Cloud Practitioner, on the SysOp Administrator, and also on AWS Developer Associate all for a big discounted price. All you have to do is enroll in my course, the preparation course for the Solution Architect Associate, and you get all of these practice tests for free. Now, a number of students, if you just go to my preparation course and see the review comments, you will see a number of students have already passed the certification exam based on my practice test because I ensure that these practice tests are similar to what you would get in the actual exam. So I normally give the exam, I ensure that the same concepts and the same type of questions are also prepared in my practice test. But it's not only that, if you want to certify yourself as an AWS developer, as a SysOp administrator, or even as a cloud practitioner, you can take this course, get my practice test. And for all of my students, who follow me on the Udemy platform, they get a lot of bonus perks. So for example, those students who actually applied for my cloud practitioner course also got a lot of these practice tests for free. So when you join me on the Udemy platform, you can be assured that you get a lot of perks and bonuses for free when you take up my courses. So now let's go on to the small snippet video for my preparation course. And then after this, please do go ahead and actually view my preparation course on the Udemy platform. Now let's go to EBS volumes. Now EBS volumes don't have the same level of durability as a simple storage service. This is very important to understand. Now in an availability zone, when you create an EBS volume, it is replicated to multiple devices in that availability zone. But if that zone fails for any reason whatsoever, your volume will not be available. So sometimes in questions you will see how can you safeguard your data on an EBS volume because this is your job. This is not the job of AWS. What you can do is that you can create EBS snapshots. This will be an answer option. And you can also copy the snapshots onto another region for disaster recovery purposes. Remember, that you directly cannot create a snapshot in another region. You have to first create the snapshot and then use the copy snapshot option to copy the snapshot onto a different region. These two steps are important to know from an exam perspective. Now, when it comes to the objectives of performance storage and also cost optimized storage, you will get a few questions when it comes to EBS volumes. So let's understand this in more detail. Now we have four types of volumes in EBS. So you have the general purpose SSD, you have the provision IOPS, you have the throughput optimized HDD, and finally you have the coal HDD. So let's understand when you would use the different underlying volume types. Let's say you have an EC2 instance, it's hosting a web server, it has a predictable workload. In such a case, you are asked in the question, what is the most cost effective volume type you will use for the underlying EBS volumes? You would choose general purpose SSD. This is good to use for predictable workloads such as web servers, where you don't have much input output operations on the EBS volumes. That time you will choose general purpose SSD. You will not choose provision IOPS because that is not cost optimized. General provision IOPS is more expensive than general purpose SSD. So remember that when you were asked in the question regarding both cost optimized and performance storage, 
to choose the right option accordingly. Now let's look at the other classification of the EBS volume type. So let's say you have an EC2 instance. It has a database server. This is resource intensive. Now these are key words you have to see in the question. In the question it will say that you have a resource intensive workload on an EC2 instance. There is a high number of input and output operations. All keywords that you can see in a question. Now before we can actually go ahead and decide on what is the underlying EBS volume, I want to bring a small note on what is the meaning of a high number of input and output operations. What's the difference between the database server and a web server? So a web server normally would deliver your web pages, you request web pages and it just picks up the content, processes it and gives it to you. But in the database, what do you normally do? So you would normally fire select statements. This is equivalent to a read operation. You could also perform update, insert and delete statements, which is a write operation. So this is a very simple case of a database. Now when you're performing this read and write operations, what the database engine Let's say it's an Oracle database. What will it do internally? Well, it will anyway go to its underlying volumes, right, which is stored on the EC2 instance. If you are firing the select statement, it will search for the data on the volume. If you're using an update, insert or delete statement, it needs to write the data on the underlying volume. So in the end, the database again has to access the underlying volume, the disk on which the data resides and this job of reading and writing data is actually a job of something known as a device known as an input output controller and this can take a lot of strain if you have a lot of read and write operations because the input output controller has to search on the disk where to read the data from where to write the data and when you have a lot, many number of select, update, insert and delete statements, then the controller starts lagging behind and you start taking a performance hit. So in such a case, you should use the provision IOPS volumes. That's because these volumes have been designed in such a way that it makes it more easier to do the input and output operations. It's actually especially built for this purpose and it gives you higher performance on your underlying volumes. Obviously, you do need to pay more when compared to the general purpose SSD. But when you get a question, you will get it based on performance. So you have to choose provision IOPS has the underlying EBS volume type. Next, let's take the next use case scenario. So we have an EC2 instance. This time we're having some sort of processing application on the server. It's used for processing videos. Now when you're processing videos, the videos could be taken from an external location. It will be uploaded to your EC2 instance. These videos could be large in size. These videos could be streamed from another device or application or another node. In such a case, you need high throughput. So throughput means that the number of the amount of data which is coming in and out of your instance is a lot. So it's not the processing power. So it is not the amount of input and output that's occurring on the disk. So you're not writing uh, frequently to the disk. This time it's the amount of data that you're actually writing and reading from the disk. So it's a chunks of data which is large in size. So in such a case, this is known as high throughput. What we do is, you guess it right, it is throughput optimized HDD. So in a question, you would get this figure saying that we want to have an EBS volume type which has high throughput of let's say 400 megabytes per second. So this is the amount of data that can be transferred onto the instance per second. So this is good for large streaming data such as videos, images, you know, audio, etc. This is more cost effective than using provision IOPS. And then finally to end all of this off, we have the coal HD. This is for infrequently accessed storage. 
This is also optimized for throughput, but this is more for infrequent access. So let's take a use case scenario. Let's say you have a user uploading videos, it's the same as our previous case. The videos get stored on the EBS volumes. They get access very frequently over a period of two months, but then after that they start getting access less frequently. What would you do? So if you want to store these videos only on the EC2 instance, you can have two separate volumes. You can store the videos for two months on the volume which is of the EBS type throughput optimized HDD and after two months you can have a script which transfers the video onto another volume which is of type coal HDD. Overall you have the perfect solution when it comes to performance storage. At the same time you're also optimizing on cost because if you're to store the videos on throughput optimized HDD even after two months you're simply paying for extra storage when the data is not being accessed that frequently. Right, so in this chapter, we have looked at how to map the objectives, what are the type of questions you will be asked when it comes to the simple storage service and EBS volumes. Let's move on to the next chapter.